All right, everybody, welcome back to Average Aviator. I'm Travis, and today I'm gonna give a little insight into what it's actually like owning a Mooney. So let's just get right into it. All right, so if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, you should go check those out. But you'll know that the airplane is in for its annual inspection right now. So I think it's a perfect time to kind of show what it's actually like to own a Mooney some of the quirks that they have. So I have my 63C model here, and today I'm gonna to pull the lower cowling, which out of all the things that uh, Moonies have that are kind of weird, um, pulling the lower cow cowling on the six, this 63C model is kind of a pain in the butt. So we'll talk a little bit about that and maybe some other weird things that you have to do at annual inspection because Moonies are kind of notorious for being a pain in the butt to work on. And that's kind of, kind of true. It's, it's kind of earned, but it's also sometimes overblown. So let's get right to it. All right, so first things first, because I've been getting this plane ready for annual, uh, I've done a couple things to it already. And that really just mainly consists of taking off a lot of the cowlings and panels. You see over here we have the side cowling, the top cowling, some, uh, panels from underneath. So the the C models, the old C models, have three cowlings, well I guess technically three parts to the top cowling and then one single bottom cowling part. So the three cowlings for the top are actually relatively easy to take off, but they have screws all around them. I don't know the exact number of screws, it's probably close to 20 screws or something per side. And you can take the side plates off, if you imagine the panel being here. You can take the side plates off, but that would leave the top. And once you take those off, you can get to most things, or at least inspect most things. But if for some reason you have to go a little bit deeper, taking the very top cowling, which is that piece right there, is a little bit more difficult than some airplanes. And that's because if you look here, there's a bolt on one on each side, and there's a couple other screws and stuff like that that you have to undo that kind of requires an extension to be able to get to. And it's not terribly difficult, but it is just a little bit more difficult than some uh, other airplanes out there. So you get the top cowling off, then you're left with pretty much all the access you could possibly need to the engine bay. All right, I wanna pause right here and talk about something that makes the Mooney a little bit more difficult to work on than some airplanes. If you notice right here, we have the Mooney engine bay and we have a Piper engine bay. And you can see the space behind the engine on the Mooney is a lot less than the space behind the engine on the Piper. And the reason for this is that the engine mount is a little longer on the Piper, it's a little shorter on the Mooney. Because there's less space behind the Mooney, it can be a little bit more difficult to get your hands and your tools behind there to work on any of the accessories behind there, or even change the oil, which is something that I have to do every 25 hours because I have an oil screen. Now this isn't that much more difficult than, say, your Piper, but it is another drop in the bucket towards the view that Moonies are harder to work on in general. All right, back to the cowling. So once you get the top cowling off, it's pretty much all you would need for most everything. But there's a couple things that you might need to do uh, that would require dropping the bottom cowling here. And this is where I think the Moonies gain a lot of reputation for being a pain in the butt to work on. For my purposes today, I have to drop this lower cowling because I am replacing the starter. The starter has been giving me issues. It was kind of second hand when I, when I got it. And it works fine in the summer when it's warm, but once it's cool, cold, especially in the morning, the starter really doesn't want to work. I just got a new Skytech starter that's going to be going in there. And so putting the starter in requires dropping the lower cowling because that I don't know if you can even see that. That's the starter there, and the cowling is completely surrounding it and really can't, really blocks it from coming out. So if you've never seen an airplane starter before, this is the other side of the starter. There's a little gear right there that pops out when you hit the starter, engages in your flywheel, which has a bunch of little teeth. I don't know if you can see it. A bunch of little teeth there, and that's what actually spins the, the propeller, which is what starts the engine. So maybe thinking, 
What, what the heck is the big issue with dropping the lower cowling? So first of all, the lower cowling is structural, essentially, and it's got all these bits bolted into it, like the oil cooler and the landing light. And then this probably doesn't look like much, but this is an alternate air intake. And that's got a scat tube that is also on the other side of that. And then you can see there's a bunch of stuff like this that are structural and some grounding wires, cow flaps, and just a lot of other stuff. It's just, it's just a whole mess. It's just a bunch, just everything. Everything is attached to the bottom cow. So now I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth and why it is so much of a pain in the butt to take off the bottom cowling, starting with the cow flaps. So the nice thing about this is that pretty much everything is 3 8 So at least it's got some bit of uniformity. The way that I like to do this is that I always put this back kind of the same way that I found it. Kind of put, give it a couple turns so that I don't lose it at all. There's no, I know how it goes back, I don't lose it. That's good. So I've taken the other cow flap off, but the other one took even longer and is a little bit more difficult because the exhaust is in the way. So yeah, so neither one, neither one of them is necessarily difficult, but this is only just one step. All right, so next what I'm gonna do, since I'm already on this side, is I gotta take, I gotta somehow disconnect the landing light from the rest so it can come out with the lower cowling. So I gotta take off this and then also take this wire off the landing light. So let's see what we can do with that. All right, so now that I've got this landing wire, landing light wire detached, I have to go in and attach this one and then the landing light can come out free with the rest of the cowling. This one can be difficult because I have to reach in here behind and with the screwdriver, why don't you have a bad shoulder too? And undo this right here. And that just can be, it's just awkward because the rest of this stuff all gets in the way when you're trying to reach that. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Next, I'm gonna detach this ground wire for the battery. I th think that's what it is. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, the joys of aircraft maintenance. Somehow, while well, trying to figure out what size this is, I've got this completely jammed in the thing here. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the hell I did wrong. So give me a minute, I'm gonna to try to figure this out. Got it. I'm working with a bad shoulder here. It's not the, it's not the greatest thing in the world. It's actually really making this difficult. All right. Next is one of the most difficult things, which is taking the oil cooler lines off of the bracket. Taking them off is not necessarily difficult, but putting them back on, you have to squeeze these two clamps and I've th uh, found the best way to do it is with safety wire. Next up on the list is to undo the, the screws here, take off the oil cooler, and then secure it somehow inside, so it's not just dangling there by itself. So now that we have the oil cooler free, you can just attach a zip tie up to one of these intakes, uh, intakes or anywhere else that you can find just so that it's not just hanging loose whenever you take the cowling off. That'll work. Next is uh, one of the more difficult things to get to, and that is that scat tube right there needs to come off. So you just gotta reach in your arm and undo that real quick.
Now there's about four or six screws underneath here that aren't terribly difficult to get to, but there's two that are right covered by the nose gear. So you either have like a 90 degree screw screwdriver or you figure something else out. All right, so I don't have a 90 degree wrench, so what I, or a screwdriver, so what I did is I just made my own out of a bit and some vice grips, and that works pretty well. So now that I've got all that done, the next step is to take off the final brackets that are holding the cowling on. And before I do that, I like to double check and make sure I have everything disconnected because what I don't want to do is undo the brackets and then find out that I left something connected and rip it off or at worst or just have to try to find some way to support it while I take whatever I forgot off. So I'm going to do one final uh, walk around make sure that I got everything. And then I'm going to take this bracket right here off. Let's do it. So one thing I failed to mention while I was filming this was how long it actually took to take off the cowling and how that compares to other airplanes. So the side panels take approximately five to 10 minutes each, depending on if you're using a screw gun or if you just have a normal screwdriver. I've found that the top cowling can also take another five to 10 minutes, depending on if you have the right tools for the two bolts in the very front. But the bottom cowling is by far the hardest and it takes anywhere from half an hour to to an hour depending on how familiar you are with the lower cowling and its quirks. To compare this to other airplanes, I watched a video from Vincent Enter who took off the cowling of his Cessna 177 RG in roughly 10 minutes and I'll give a link to that video in the description below. So that's another reason why the Moonies get a bad rap as far as maintenance because just the cowling alone can take an hour to an hour and a half as compared to some other airplanes which take 10 minutes to completely uncover the engine. Alright, so here's the cowling off and it's upside down so I can show you. Um, it's actually got a modification called a cowl closure, I think. But what that does is it closes up the cowling a little bit and helps improve airflow and helps improve cooling. It's supposed to give you speed, but honestly cooling is just the, the best uh, thing for that it does. So while I have it out, since I've painted the rest of the cowling black, I'm going to go ahead and tape this up and paint everything here black to match the rest. So it's not black and white and blue, it's just blue and black. All right, so that's pretty much it for today. Now that the cowling is off, I can go in there and uh, when the AMP comes, uh, we can replace the starter and finish up the rest of the annual. I'm gonna go home and paint the cowling. The plane should be back up and flying relatively shortly here. If you like this sort of thing, please consider subscribing. If I've earned it, give a thumbs up. And if not, tell me in the comments what I should improve or maybe some ideas for the next video. But thanks for everything. See ya.